Okay, so this is the first YouTube video I've ever actually made, and my name is Peyton Crest, and today, if you couldn't already tell based on the title, I will be simply discussing how I scored a 5 on the AP Chemistry 2021 exam by self-studying in a two-week time period. Realistically speaking, however, it was a shorter time period than two weeks. First, before I start the video, I do want to provide a disclaimer and emphasize that AP scores do not determine your worth. And frankly, it's the work and the learning that takes place in the class throughout the duration of the year. So I did receive a score of a 5 on the AP Chemistry exam. However, I do think it was more rewarding the process itself of actually learning chemistry and being able to apply that to my future career path and passions. Next, I want to provide a few disclaimers about my entire AP Chemistry situation because there were a few caveats. First and foremost, I have previously taken a chemistry class in high school. I took honors chemistry sophomore year. However, I do not remember a single thing except for intermolecular forces and a little bit of stoichiometry. Other than that, did not remember a single thing. My second disclaimer is that I took the 2021 Administration 3 exam for the College Board for the AP Chemistry exam. So this was a digital exam, so it differed from the traditional paper format exam that we saw in years previously. So for the digital exam, it was comprised of three sections in comparison to the traditional paper exam, which only has two. Section one was 90 minutes and it consisted of 60 questions. This was 50% of your score. Section two was 60 minutes to answer 40 multiple choice questions. And that was also combined with section three, which gave you 45 minutes to answer three FRQ questions. Sections two and three were 50% of the entire AP chemistry score. Now, you might be saying, well, of course she got five. She took the online exam. We were not able to use notes on the online exam. And on top of that, the resources weren't as readily available with the periodic table. You actually had to flip back and forth, which was not necessarily an ideal situation. However, I do want to mention that throughout the entirety of the exam, we were permitted to use a calculator. And as someone who is very bad at mental math, this helped me out immensely. And another caveat with the online exam, of course, is that you could not go back to previously answered questions. So I just wanted to have those disclaimers in mind to emphasize that I did not take a traditional exam. Now I wanna provide a disclaimer about the timing situation. So you might be wondering why did I take the online exam if I had the opportunity to take paper and pencil? Well, this year I took 10 exams. Not nine AP exams and one IB exam, and one of which was chemistry for the AP exams respectively. And so I wanted to take chemistry and I wanted to self-study. However, based on the timing of my other exams, I was not able to have an adequate enough time period to do as well as I would have liked on those and have the time in which I needed to study for the chemistry exam. So to do so, I asked to push out my exam date to administration three so I could have more time to study. So what I did is after I finished my final exam, I had a two week time period and this was during my graduation and I wasn't doing anything in any of my other classes because they were AP courses. So all of my coursework had ended. Realistically speaking, I had around six hours a day to study for chem. Did I use all of those six hours? Absolutely not. So in that two week period, I actually ended up doing around one unit every single day. So for AP Chemistry, there are 10 units and I was wrong. There are nine units. I should know this. Yeah. And I did one unit per day. So this was cramming. And by the end of it, I did have one final day to study. However, just based on timing and some units did take maybe two days for me, as well as my graduation, I ultimately studied for this exam in around 10 days. So now that I'm done with all those disclaimers, I want to talk about the process of me studying and how that allowed me to ultimately score a five on the exam. So in terms of studying, all the resources I used were free. With the exception of AP Classroom might not be free. I candidly don't know because it's already associated with my school and my college board identification. On top of that, I was enrolled in a specific course where I had the videos available as well as the multiple choice and FRQ questions. Traditional classroom setting, you might not have access to the multiple choice questions nor the FRQs and you need a teacher to grant it to you. I don't know, in my situation, I did have access, but that was after I spoke with a chemistry teacher at my school. So all the resources that I used consisted of Khan Academy, the AP Daily Classroom videos, so I used the 2021 AP Daily videos, but I also used the review sessions from the 2020 exam as well. I also utilized the videos from the Organic Chemistry Tutor, that was great for the basics. And finally, I was enrolled in a research course and my instructor was actually a chemistry teacher, so he was able to answer any questions that I had along the way. 
Granted, this resource, this resource was not necessarily free. As I mentioned previously, I had already taken honors chemistry. Did I remember much of the content? No, absolutely not. So I needed to get the basics down again. And to do that, I utilized Khan Academy. Khan Academy has great videos that correspond with the AP Chemistry class. There's a beta version out right now, so that means it doesn't align perfectly with the course, but generally speaking, it covers the bare necessities of content that you need. So in order to understand the bare necessities, I went on Khan Academy. They have tons of videos for each respective unit. So each unit is broken down into lessons and respective videos. At the end of a lesson, there is a progress check or a quiz. And at the end of each unit, there is a unit test. This is extremely beneficial. While they do not have FRQ style questions, nor do these questions come from the College Board directly, they are great practice. And I did find some skills that ended up translating to the AP Chemistry exam itself. So with Khan Academy, generally speaking, they had a few different individuals discussing or explaining these various concepts. Most often it was Sal. I love Sal, my guy. Uh, but they did have a few videos that they partnered with the AAMC or the Association of American Medical Colleges. I'm assuming that this is for MCAT material which these videos I watched, but I did not watch in their entirety. They tended to be around 15 minutes, whereas the general videos with Khan Academy tended to be around five to seven. So with these 15 minute videos, I would kind of skim through them, get the content. If I didn't understand it, I would go to another source, most often the organic chemistry tutor. So after I learned all of the Khan Academy, again, this was just the bare bones. I went into more of the nitty gritty details and that was with the AP daily videos. So the AP daily videos were rather short, again, around three to 10 minutes maximum. And so you had these AP instructors going over these questions. And if I already understood the content from Khan Academy, I was not afraid to fast forward through and just go straight to those questions. Similar to Khan Academy at the end of each unit, they had a multiple choice question and FRQs. And what was great about these multiple choice questions is they had this little bar and the bar would rank how well you were doing based on these questions. I do know, however, in my situation, I could not go back and see the answers to the FRQs. However, it was good practice and I highly recommend doing it. It allowed me to get used to the exam format, especially in an online setting. For the multiple choice questions, I did have the opportunity to go back and view the questions that I got wrong, which as you will hear many individuals who study a lot say, you need to do that in order to learn what you are missing out on. So while I watched all these videos, I took notes on an iPad, like the one I have here, and I would watch the videos on my laptop. I of course know that this is not accessible to many individuals, so I did prepare a list of all of my notes down below of everything that I took for each unit. Granted, some of the details are more idiosyncratic because they were in relation to the concepts that I didn't understand or didn't already know. One resource that I would recommend as well is Bozeman Science. I use Bozeman Science for a lot of biology, actually. However, he also is super helpful for chemistry. I believe I used him for hybridization and I also used another podcast. So for the concepts that I didn't understand even after watching the AP Daily and Khan Academy and other external resources, I would then write down the question that I had and I would go to my research instructor and ask him. The questions on Khan Academy and on AP Daily are great resources and super applicable to the AP exam. So just if you don't want to watch the videos or power through the content because you already learned that in class, that is fine. But go over those practice questions. They're extremely beneficial. So after I completed reviewing all of the content, I did do one of the previously released 2008 AP Chemistry multiple choice exam. And then I did a few questions from the 2018 FRQ for AP Chemistry. I also prepared a final review sheet on my iPad discussing all of the key concepts. So the day of the exam, right before it started, I was scrolling through and looking at all the information and the notes that I had taken in. These were key concepts, but as well as concepts that I had a little bit more of a difficult time understanding and it grouped it based on units. I've included that down below if you want a master sheet. Okay, future Peyton coming on here wanting to share a tip with all of you. So if you have a TI-84 plus CE calculator, there's actually a periodic table. If you go into apps and then you scroll down to number 7, which is periodic, you have access to the periodic table. While it doesn't list the atomic number up front, you can see any piece of information for each element. So just thought it might be something nice to have and access to. I, and I want to conclude this video by saying that this is not for everyone. This was my senior year of high school. I missed out on my senior party to take this exam. However, I do want to say doing something like this is doable. I remember leaving. I was going to cancel my exam because I was very scared that I was not going to be able to do it. But I powered through and it was a good decision. I feel free to reach out, download my sheet. Let me know if you have any chemistry questions. I would be more than happy to help. Thank you.
So I'm editing this two hours later and I realized that the ending was very abrupt and not that friendly, but if you have any questions, whether it be about college applications, chemistry, anything AP, please feel free to message me. I am more than happy to answer any comments below. And yeah, I hope this video helped you somewhat. If not, I'm sorry that I probably wasted your time. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. Bye.